be. Let me set this up as far as what I think President Trump uh, should be doing tomorrow. And of course, who cares what I say? Showing up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, let's not set those expectations <laughs> no, low. Nick. Biden, here's the thing. Uh, Biden baloney. has been sequestered. He is spending nothing but time on preparing for this debate. Why? Because he doesn't have the mental bandwidth to prepare for anything else simultaneously. Look at what Donald Trump is having to do. This guy has had to campaign while he's been undergoing a phony trial and a conviction. This is, and we're going to go through the topics, I think the most, the most likely lines of attack, and you can comment below as to what you think are the most likely lines of attack from Biden. I think it's going to probably be immigration. It's probably going to be, because they know it's a weak spot, probably abortion, Roe v. Wade. And he's going to, at some point, try and trumpet his, uh, his, his Bidenomics record because no one is buying it. Donald Trump needs to spend very, very little time addressing the attacks from Biden. He needs to parry that, right? The most effective boxer, the most effective fighter, the most effective athlete, I would imagine, any sport, is moving out of the way as much as you need to and no more to be right back in a line of attack. And Donald Trump has a really strong ace in the hole here. He goes right back on the offensive, and he needs to go to contrast. I've been talking about this for five years. You've had eight years of Barack Obama. You really had three of Donald Trump. And he should reiterate, you had three years of Donald Trump and then four years of Biden by the time you get to these elections. The, the contrast is so clear. Seldom do you get eight years of a pattern, a completely, uh, a, a complete 180, a complete about face where you see different results for those years under Donald Trump and then back to same old, same old. He needs to contrast that. So let me go through some examples here as to how I believe um, he can handle it and, and how I hope that you see him handling it. So a big topic I'm, I guarantee you Biden's going to bring up. It's the one winning issue because a lot of people are ignorant and unfortunately a lot of younger women vote with their pussies. <laughs> Abortion. Oh my God, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Says you. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> Can't get enough of it, apparently. So, abortion. Here's what you're going to see former Vice President Biden make. He's going to try and make this claim that Donald Trump wants to turn back the clock on women's rights. States all over this country, from Ohio, Kansas, Michigan, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Virginia. Brazil. Women and men in every background voted to record numbers to protect record numbers to protect reproductive freedom. Oh, so close to being coherent. Now, uh, a lot of people are saying this is going to be tough for Donald Trump because, oh, you have the conservative right who are, who are pro-life and he didn't answer very effectively. No, here's how Donald Trump handles this, the quick parry, because Biden's going to say he wants to put a federal ban. No, it's, it's, no, actually, Roe v. Wade put it back to the, the courts, put it back to the states. I respect the courts. I respect the courts. It goes to the states. You don't respect the courts. You want a fed. You want a federal, a federal mandate of abortion. A federal mandate. And if he doesn't get it, he'll pack the courts. He'll add more seats to the courts. Can you? Right away. I respect the courts. Goes to the states. You don't respect the court. Point him out to be the authoritarian that he is, because Joe Biden wants to enshrine Roe v. Wade mm -hmm. into law. The next attack that I would right away go to. And the reason the states had to put, they would, the court wouldn't have had to intervene. They wouldn't have had to do anything. The states wouldn't need laws if your, your party wasn't so radical. 10 to 15,000 late-term abortions every year, according to the CDC. 10 to 15,000. No one debates that's a life, Joe. At that point, it's 22 weeks. They could be born. Where's your line, Joe? Where's, where's the line, Joe? Where's your line? Where, where is it not okay? Give him the floor. Throw it back to him and shut up. Let Joe Biden have to answer for that. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if that question is asked, he will never answer. He will never answer. He'll no. say, oh, it's between a doctor and its yeah. patient. And 22 weeks, 15,000 per year, Joe. He'll answer, but it won't be in English. <laughs> no, exactly. no, but he's also, they're also Subtitles. trying to drag this issue out of the 8th, ninth, 10th on people's list and try to make it first. That's they right. Think they can win there. So I think this is the one that matters most to hit him and move on, just mm -hmm. like you're talking about. Like, all of these, they matter, but this one is one he wants to spend time, he wants to drag the fight to abortion, do not let him. Ask him a question that he will not answer right. and stop speaking. Here's why. Remember how I said he's fighting the moderators? If Donald Trump says, well, wh where is it not okay, Joe? Where's the line? Just so I know, where's the line? Stop speaking. Where's the line? The moderator is going to have to say, uh, you don't have to answer that, Joe. And if they say that enough, it's very clear. Yeah that Joe needs a defense. He needs the umbrella, the covering of the moderators at CNN. If Donald Trump asks the, parry, attack, and then put the ball in Joe Biden's court. 
You can't ask those questions, uh, Mr. Trump. Fine, let him answer. They don't need to tell you to no longer interrupt. They're going to have to assist Joe or you've tossed him a question that he cannot answer. Because here's the thing about leftists. They only destroy. They cannot build. They are not effective in offering an answer. This brings us to the next big issue. Because it is such an Achilles heel of former Vice President uh, Joe Biden, everyone knows right now with immigration that this is not going well. And so you see this out on uh, former Vice President Biden's social media. Now they're trying to say, no, 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 I know you are, but what am I? Actually, it's you. It's you who didn't do anything on immigration. That's how Biden is going to attack. Now, of course, it wouldn't hold water if not for the arena of CNN. We already have a nigger mayor. We don't need any more nigger big shots. Sorry, right clip, but here's the other one. My first day in office, I sent Congress a comprehensive plan on immigration reform. My friends on the other side have done nothing with it. Okay, so right away we get to the Perry. He's going, to tr he's going to try and say, you just saw some variation of, you're not serious about the border. Donald Trump didn't do anything about the border. Donald Trump right away answered, parry that, get, it's got to be, get that shit out of the way, right away, <laughs> to go to where he wants to go. I didn't do anything. I built 458 miles of border, Joe. I, I implemented the remain in Mexico policy for asylum seekers. I did so little, Joe, that you immediately reversed 89 of Trump, me, that's me. Border <laughs> policies by executive order right away. You've parried. I didn't do anything. I did so much that you decided to reverse all of it. And what has that led to? Now we go to contrast. Over, over 8 million illegals have been encountered since you've taken. That's just at the southern border. My entire presidency was 3 million. And more illegals, by the way, with criminal records than ever before. Under me, average per year was 5,000. With you, it's almost 13,000, Joe. 5,000 to 13,000. Terrorists encountered on the southern border under Biden. 11 under Trump, 380 under Biden. These are just the ones that we know about. And if Biden tries to go with a sappy story, he's going to try and do a case, some kind of a personal example. You saw what happened with uh, Lake and Riley, how that was effective. I believe you need to go to the empirical first and then provide an anecdotal because the left only provides anecdotal and it's a much stronger one-two punch. Bring up something specific so that Joe has to answer for it because he couldn't even get the name right last time. Last week, uh, you had, was it, it was Jocelyn, Jocelyn Nungare, 12-year-old from Houston, murdered by two Venezuelan illegals. Murdered. This person fought back. Here's the thing. It's a crime that never should have happened. Say, you have all these criminals, terrorists coming over the border, Joe, as a result of your 89 reversals of executive orders. She'd still be alive today. That's a crime that never should have been, they shouldn't have been here. And then, if he wants to go for the coup de grace, maybe, that, maybe that's why Hispanics, maybe that's why Latinos trust me more than Joe. That's what they say. 46 to 40. Trust Trump over Biden. Think about that. That's a huge swing. That's enough to change Arizona. That's enough to change Nevada. Talk to them. They're already on the Trump train. Everyone knows that President Trump loves Mexican culture. It's no surprise. So much so that he's even opening his own chain of Mexican restaurants. Yeah, I would eat there. <laughs> At least once. It's better than the, uh, the Amtrak clams. <laughs> Clam track. <laughs> Clam track. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Did I miss anything? No? Okay, let's go to the economy here because this is one that they're preparing Joe Biden. He's sitting there and he only has a couple of claims that he can go to. And, uh, what I mean by that is lie. And all of these references are available, of course. A link in the description, louderwithcrowder.com. We make them publicly available for you. I hope that uh, President Donald Trump does the same. So you are going to have some kind of a claim because the economy is bad, that Bidenomics is working and you're not seeing it, or some kind of class warfare that Donald Trump, uh, yeah, we need someone who helps build the backbone of America, not just the wealthiest few. That's going to be his attack on Donald Trump. Folks, it's no accident. That's Bidenomics in action. Bidenomics is about building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. Okay, so this one's really pretty simple. You don't need to spend a whole lot of time parrying because if he makes an attack, just boom. No, Donald Trump's economy helped everybody. The attack and counter here is at the exact same time. The middle class is completely dying under Biden. You just go straight to the numbers. Since you took office, 90% is the increase in mortgage payments. 90% mortgage payments are up 90. Can you believe it? 90. I said, that's got to be a mistake. They said it's 90. 
Credit card debt over one trillion for the first time. Average income's under Trump, that's me. They went up by 4,000, Joe. They only went up by 1,000 under eight years of Obama. <laughs> they went down $4,200. Annual income's under you, Biden. Adjusting uh, for the inflation, you look at the net worth increase, the first three years of presidency under Donald Trump, net worth increase, 16%, Biden, 0.7%. If we want to go to a, a case study, again, they use the anecdotal, lead it with the empirical, but hey, you've got a story, I've got a story too. Two-thirds of small businesses say right now that Biden's economy could force them to close forever. Small business confidence is at, at an all-time low, all-time low. 12-year low, sorry, I should say 12-year low, all-time low in modern American history since we've actually been conducting these polls. That's lower than during COVID. Think about that. Jeez. These small, so when, when Biden says, ah, oh, racist, well, then why do the Hispanics like me better than you, Joe? Oh, the backbone of the economy, small businesses, they hate you. There's nowhere for him to go. That's what I believe the most effect, uh, effective path to victory is here. Perry, right away, Go on offense and contrast. That contrast is a silver bullet that not a lot of people have. Donald Trump can be confident in his record. The American people, when polled, are confident in his record. They just maybe don't like him as a personality. That's less relevant when you're arguing the facts at the debate. This is, I think President Trump is walking into a trap. Let me be clear. This is how you deconstruct that trap. Point out the magician's palm in it. They can't do it. Ask the question, leave it to Joe. They're going to have to protect him. If they have to do that all night, he's going to come across as really weak. And I bet that uh, Kamala Harris puts uh, a blow dryer in his bathtub.